Hey, this is Jacket Anatomy Zone, and in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the anatomy of the coracobrachialis muscle. So the coracobrachialis lies deep to the biceps brachii and medial to the brachialis muscle in the anterior compartment of our arm. So what I'll do is remove those other muscles so that we can concentrate more on the coracobrachialis. It originates from the coracoid process, which is this anterior projection off of the scapula bone. And from the coracoid process, it then passes through the axilla to attach to the medial side of the humeral shaft at approximately the level of the deltoid tubercle. The action of this muscle is to create flexion of the arm at the shoulder, but it also weakly contributes to adduction at the shoulder as well. In terms of the nerve supply, like the other muscles within the anterior compartment of the arm, the coracobrachialis is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. And the musculocutaneous nerve originates from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus, which is made up of the anterior rami of the cervical nerve roots C5, 6 and 7. Now switching to the blood supply, the blood supply to the coracobrachialis comes from the brachial artery. The brachial artery originates as a continuation of our axillary artery and you can see here at the inferior margin of the teres major is where the brachial artery begins. In terms of relating this to a clinical condition, the coracobrachialis muscle can be involved in what's called musculocutaneous nerve entrapment syndrome. So as you can see, the musculocutaneous nerve passes behind the coracobrachialis muscle. So if this muscle becomes hypertrophied, such as if you were doing lots of um, repetitive exercises that require flexion and adduction of the humerus, like um, bench pressing, press-ups over a really long time, you can get hypertrophy of the coracobrachialis muscle and therefore compression on the musculocutaneous nerve. Equally, if you get lots of injuries to the coracobrachialis muscle, um, you can also get calcium deposits at the back that compress onto that nerve. The symptoms of that injury would include anterior shoulder pain, uh, but it also gives you weakness of elbow flexion, and that's because the musculocutaneous nerve supplies the brachialis and the biceps muscle, both of which perform elbow um, flexion. And so as well as the elbow flexion weakness, you can get loss of the sensation over the lateral forearm because the musculocutaneous nerve, as it reaches the elbow, continues on as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm that unsurprisingly supplies sensation to our lateral forearm. And treating this condition normally requires a period of rest, uh, stretching exercises, and some anti-inflammatory medication. So that's the end of this tutorial and we hope it's given you a good understanding of this muscle. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button, don't forget to subscribe and come over and check our Patreon page. Thank you for watching.